Yeah. Um, I want us to, I want to begin by saying that we've been learning very serious things. How many concur with me? Very serious, encouraging, and challenging things. And this requires us to commit ourselves to the Lord and really let the Lord use us and inspire us to start. Some of them may be uh, making us to fear, but God's people should not fear if the Lord is with them. So we've been learning about hell. Oh, medical missionary work. And I was making the introduction, in the introduction I've been making is very important for us. Because as we'll be going now deep into how the healing art should be carried out, when we shall be going deep into what is really in the healing art, we need first to understand how we are supposed to go into that work and we exact work are we going to do. So, before I proceed, I made some statements yesterday. Some people were shocked about how the physicians ought to work, the male and female physician. And to some extent, some may be feared. <laughs> and so they don't feel very free. Now we say that the male physicians are not to do delicate uh, treatment on the female patients. The female physicians should also not do delicate treatment on the what? On the men. Now what does that mean? It involves treatment that will require, a, if it is a female patient, to remove a cloth and you, uh, you go on the private issues. That should not be done. That is only done with, a partic with the same sex. Are we today? But for counseling, for giving instruction, a male physician can instruct and guide and can give advice to a female patient. Are we together? Same. Yeah. So um, let that be very clear. As we maintain those delicacy and morality that is needed. Another announcement I want to make is that if you are sick, see me or see Elder David. I can help you or advise you. I'm looking for two people here who are having teeth or tooth problem. You see me. They have had something, only two that I can help someone with a tooth problem. And any other disease we can cancel together. Okay? Now today I want us to just to introduce this a little bit. God has called us to be medical missionary workers. But uh, in this class, I'm going to deal with the healing art. The Bible says that in the church, some have been put to, God has given the gift of healing, the gift of, of prophecy, the gift of tongues, of helps. So the medical missionary work under physician ministry or healing art lies in that category of healing and help. Are we together? Yeah. So I, there are some uh, some things that we need to understand as we introduce this class. How 
how to practice, practice this art. There is only one way that God wants us to follow, and it is what is going to succeed. It is the only way that is going to succeed. We need to ask ourselves, what is God's program for health and healing? And I've been looking this and connecting it with the crisis that is coming before us. We need to be physicians or nurses or health attendants that are going to use things at their convenience, that are going to speak words that they, the Lord himself has given them to help the sick. Because everywhere we find those who are sick and need help. Now, what you need to understand is that the health message or the healing message is connected to the third angel's message. It is like the arm that opens the door so that the, the third, uh, the gospel or the, the truth for this time, the present truth can enter into the hearts of men. So the proclamation of the third angel's message the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus is the burden of our work. The presentation of health principles must be united with this message, but must not in any case be independent of it or in any way take the place of it. So if, we, if you have the talent of reaching out unto the sick, giving remedies to them, prescribing Christ unto them, one of the things that we need to know is that it needs to be united with the third angel's message. And what is the third angel's message? Let me test us and see. What is the third angel's message? Yes? It is the revelation of the love of God to the people. All right, you want to add another thing? Uh, second that is, she also said that the third of the blessing is the Russian of Christ the Lord. Yes. What did you want to say? Yeah, the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. Yes. What is the third angel's message? So, 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 mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. uh, it gives hope too. It is a righteousness by faith message. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. So the faith of Jesus is that faith that, that faith that will completely and amply save us, believing in Christ and following his footsteps. So, so while the whole world is wandering after the beast and receiving the image of the beast, what should God's people receive? Seal. The seal of God or the image of the image of God. And this is demonstrated in their lives. It is a practical work, practical uh, demos, uh, manifestation of the love of God, what God can do to a sinner. So in the gospel medical missionary work, it helps us to show that, to show that to the, to the world. So it has to be the faith of Jesus in practice. We are calling people to the faith of Jesus. Do you know that there is only one thing that Christ was worried when he was going back to heaven? Do you know it? What was it? Remember after giving the parable of the church in the end time, he said that therefore, when the son of man cometh, shall he find what? Shall he find faith? 
on earth because the world has been adulterated to an extent that people believe in doubt. Before someone believes, they doubt it first. It takes a lot of power to make someone believe. So the devil has really made things very, very good to an extent that we find it very hard to believe the simple things that God has given us. So the great work of a medical missionary or a physician to the sick is to make that person have faith. And this is to do with the mind. Healing begins in the, in the mind. Why do you find people die today in the hospitals? They lack faith. At the same time, the way in which the hospital are working are not according to God's plan. So that faith and trusting that God can do something is what we are called into as a physician. Will that person believe that what you are doing is of God? Or the first day, the second day, it wasn't. By the way, if you meet, you're going to see as we continue maybe now, next week. <clears throat> you meet some cases as you continue treating, the worse they become. And then people begin shaking. And you just begin asking, what can I do? Have I done something wrong? Yet God is testing the faith of the, of the patient. He's testing your faith. This is something that uh, we really need to pray that God may help. Presenting, having that faith of Jesus manifested in your life, as well as to the one you are, you are ministering to. And then another thing, uh, that we read in, I think this is CD, or CH. There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there is only one way that heaven approves. Can you list for me some of the arts of healing in the world today? You carry up your hand and yes. Using drugs, yes. Allopathy, that is called allopathy. What else? Yes. What? Surgery. Right. Another way? Yes. What? Witchcraft. Witchcraft see? Oh. <laughs> okay. What else? I do. Chemotherapy. Good. This is a learned class. What else? Yes. Prayer. Prayer. Okay. For the world first. But that is that is true. Yes. Natural remedies. Okay. What else? Natural hygiene. I want the worldly one, the worldly one first. Okay. Do you know of any? Yes. Diet. Okay, so the world has its diet. Yeah, let's go to the world first. What? No, they're different. So we have radiotherapy. We have magnetism. Do you know magnetism? Here in Uganda, it is not there. Magnetism and uh, hypnotism. You've heard about it? The yoga? We have naturopathy. Have you heard about naturopathy? You've never heard. Oh, these people just use the, the nature and they use it in line with some other spiritualistic beliefs, like the Ayurveda medicine. You know Ayurveda? the Indian type. You get hypnotized, you have some position to, to face 
Sometimes uh, being in the sun or looking at the sun and memorizing, trying to think some God from there is going to shed some rays in you. Yes? Aijin. Good, my brother. Aijin is one of the... <laughs> yes? Circulation. Okay, these children are very clever. So there are many, many ways of practicing the healing art. But amidst all of those, how many ways does heaven approve? One way. Does it mean? Now, what is the difference? If only one God approves, someone has gone and has been drugged and gets well. And you say there is only one way. Does it mean that the other one, God is not in it? I want to challenge you. Give me an answer. What do you think? Yes, my brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, in spirit of prophecy, in the drug medication, it says that the drug may seem to have done what? But it really uh, suppressed the body, the body's uh, method of eliminating waste, which, and this has not healed the person. It will come in a worse, in a worse manner. So, uh, but there's some of these people who do not know. I'm speaking about those who have not known God's way. They go to the hospital and they get him because they are faith. They are faith. They are trusting in God. God has have mercy on them and say, you just, I'm, I'm going to heal you, whichever the, the way is. But God is extending their probation that they may learn the better, the one way that God or heaven approves. Why does heaven approve this? Because he is the creator and he wants us to conform to his image. And there is some lesson he wants to teach us. Are we together? God's ways are always ways of teaching us. In Great Controversy, I think page 621 says that God's providences is the school in which we learn the meekness and lowliness of Jesus Christ. One of the providence that God gives us to make us learn of the meekness and lowliness of Jesus is through inflicting or allowing disease to come upon someone. True or false? It is the providence that when that person is healed, he may learn that there's only one power from heaven that can help him. He may be humble to trust in Jesus Christ. So there's only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature. Another thing is that God uses the simplest agencies. So his people should use those agencies by faith. And we are told that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and what? water, pure air and water, cleanliness, what else, proper diet, what else, what else after proper diet, purity of life. I pray God gives me time to elaborate that. How many knows about this law? and its effects in the healing of a sick person. Purity of what? Of life. Very important. Purity of life. Some people are sick because of impurity. There are many things that entail that. Purity of life and a firm trust in God are remedies for the one of which thousands are dying. Yet these remedies are going out of date because their skills, skillful use requires work that the people do not appreciate. So 
we must understand that they require skillful what? Skillful use. Skillful use. You may have the right thing, but you don't use it. Skillful in faith. Skillful, skillfully used. The simplest ones must be skillfully used. My burden will be how skillful are we supposed with what we have? Fresh air, exercise, pure water, clean, sweet premise. Clean, sweet premise. The premise in which or the environment where someone lives should tell you whether that person is sick or not. God wants us to have a sweet, clean premise. Now, can you tell me here? I want to interact with you. Uh, who can try to, to, to give a panorama? You know, panorama is like a preview of a sweet, clean premise. How should it look like in a trial? Yes. Yes. You have not carried your hand. You know, you know this thing. You've been living in a clean, sweet premise before? Yes. That is where we are. Is it a, a clean, sweet premise? Yes? It is a what? To some extent. But we are the ones who are littering it, by the way. We are dropping the bottles everywhere. All right, what did you want to say? A sweet, clean premise. How should it look like? Yes. Yeah, it is a place that it is inviting in every every way. If you enter the compound, you just feel this is where I need to, to be. <laughs> you can even sleep on that. Or if you go to the bedroom or the sitting room, what do you find? The windows, <clears throat> there is proper aeration in the house proper ventilation, and the smell in that house is very, very nice. The, it is well, it is, uh, it is uh, ordered. But you know, when you go to some of our houses, even if where we sleep, if I go there right now, can you qualify that that place is a, a clean, sweet premise? No. We just wake up like, Cows and do what? <laughs> and your bed, can someone desire to sleep on it the way it is it is uh, it is spread? Hmm? Do you have any other simple things that makes you to have a good health or not? If you wanted to go and sleep and the house is smelly, is rugged, you don't they sleep, just go home. Unless you are so, so tired that you cannot bear. 
But these are some of the remedies that we are told. They are within the reach of all with but little expense. But drugs are expensive, both in the outlay of means and the effect produced uh, the effect produced upon the system. So as calls people, there are some more, more of these that are, are, not men, uh, are not mentioned here. I think in our previous classes, we shall mention them. That are very important in order to have uh, a good, good health. So pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, that is self-control. Temperance, self-control in everything, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and how to do what. Every person here should have a knowledge of these simple remedies. You must know how to use water and practice it. You know, what we always do, we know them, but we don't pra practice them. How many take time to be in pure air? Hmm? Or it is a waste of time. Just taking time around the end, even three minutes, pure air. Sunlight. It is very important for us. More so a people who have a serious work to do. Pure air. In the morning, hours and in the evening. And be uh and being in the morning sunlight. You know, why do you think that in the night, if you had a cold, when do you feel that one of your nose nostrils is, is blocked? Mostly night. <laughs> in the night. When mostly do you feel a lot of pain when you are sick? When do most people die in the night? If you have ever had a cancer patient of stage three or four, when they are having a lot of pain, you cannot be the, near them unless you have the heart. You will cry with them. And the pain is always beginning in the around midnight, they are up to 3 and 3 a.m., 2 a.m. to 3 p.m., a lot of pain. And when the day breaks, what happens? The pain reduces. Why do you think so? Because of the fresh air, because of the sun. You know, this sunlight has a lot of medicinal properties. Just being in the sun there, it helps you, your body to convert the, what is called the precursor of vitamin D, calcitron, into vitamin D and then it can be assimilated into the system. It controls around 300 genetically related processes, the sun. There are some diseases that you can only treat well by putting that person in the sun. And you should have a place for sunbathing for those people. They just go there naked. In the morning, be in the sun for 30 minutes. Diseases like TB. Those who are complaining of bone problems, being in the sun. God put the sun as a law that if we follow, we find, we find help. But do you know that some lifestyle make us not to see sun even for one year. Do you know there are people like that, that have never seen the sun for one year? Are they there? They have vehicles, they go to work at four, he wakes up and bathe and eat and get into his car at five in the road and is working under basement. 
And in the basement, you only move with a chair. If you want to go there, just my chair and I'm there. If I need food, lunch time, someone just bring them. You're busy. In the evening, you end at eight or seven. You go back to the ward. And the year ends without you seeing the ward. The sun. Sunlight is very important. It clears the bacteria in the in the in the air. No wonder it, if you study it deeply, there are some diseases like cancer that when they are subjected into some temperatures, the cancer cells cannot, cannot survive, but to give up. We'll be learning this principle deeply. So are you, you know, if we are calling medical missionary here, are you practicing it? Are you practicing? Has it, has it become part and parcel of you? How many want to be medical missionary physicians who are going to heal people, to treat people? Yes. Yeah. So are you doing this thing? If you are not, how are you going to tell someone you have to exercise, you have to be in the break, but you yourself, you don't. Self-control or temperance, ab abstemiousness. Controlling yourself, what you are supposed to eat, and eating the right thing. Are you yourself doing it? That is a challenge for you to succeed. God will only bring a sanction, a, a, a seal into this work if you practice. Rest. If it is rest, do you rest? How many, uh, how many hours are we supposed to sleep? For maybe uh, people from age 12 to around 18, how many hours should they sleep? Six. Uh, six. six to seven. Hmm? Eight hours. <laughs> what about, it should be seven to eight. What about those who are others like you here? How many hours should you sleep? Six, at least, six, at least. Six. At least. At least six to eight hours. At least. At least eight hours. Six. At least six, but the range ranges between six to eight. But at least you should have. Yeah, but you know, sometimes we ignore and we want to go beyond. We sleep at around midnight. We wake up. Oh, you are injuring yourself. You will die very, very soon. Do you know, the inspiration says that we need to have sleep how many hours before midnight? Two hours before midnight. It means, actually, she said 9.30, we should, the light should be off. Two hours before midnight. Why do you think two hours before midnight? You can try. Yeah. You've answered many questions. Yes. I think the body releases some hormones to fill the body cells. Yeah, the body releases some hormones. Like between uh, between 10 to midnight, the body releases an hormone. The uh, the melatonin. No, the, the serotonin that helps the body to prepare itself for a full recovery between midnight and three, called melatonin. So in the day when you are walking and thinking a lot and doing a lot of things and someone harmed you and you are very furious, you are angered, those, that post negative thing in your life is like a thorn in your brain, brain cell. So they stick there like thorn, like someone trying to throw an arrow, it is stuck there. So you have a lot of thorns 
if that, if you are thinking on the negative side of life that needs to be removed in the between 12 to, to 2 or 3. So if you miss that, you don't sleep uh, from two hours before midnight, you better now stay away because you're not going to receive any benefit. And lack of sleep has made many people to have a lot of diseases that cannot be cured. We as ministers, we study a lot. We need to exercise uh, we need to have enough sleep. You better sleep two hours before midnight and then wake up even at two to begin studying up to morning hours. But not up to midnight and you sleep for two hours and you wake up. The body will have not regenerated itself. So sleep is very important. So when you are going to, treat, to teach people how to, uh, to sleep, do you know that many of us here even do not know how to sleep? But how should you sleep? Should you sleep straight or should you sleep when you are bent yourself like this? How should you sleep? Or uh -huh. on your side, okay? On the back, looking up. <laughs> okay, but that, that, that is good, right? You should not sleep on your back looking up for many reasons. Yes? I think that's normal. That's down. When you are this part, and you are flat. Okay, how should you sleep? <laughs> Actually, prevent the the flow of that and more exercise you need in your heart to mm -hmm. see some of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have many good ideas. How should we sleep? <laughs> Whichever position you like, right? <laughs> yes, how should we sleep? Hmm. Now you should, when you are going to sleep, you make sure the internal organs are not rest. And also don't bend a lot. You know, there are some people's beds, you know, those mattresses that are, that are very soft. You will know how that person sleeps because the way the, the mattress is. Always the spinal, the spine should be on a flat, should be flattened, should not be carved like this. We learn those principles when we go into technicalities of, of healing the disease. So, the way you sleep, pillow, you know pillow? Yeah, some people have pillow that make their neck to be, yeah, your neck is very, is crooked. Those are principles we are, we are just highlighting them right now. Um, so rest is very important. In fact, that is why God created the Sabbath. You know, Sabbath is very important for restoration of, of a sick person. Sabbath rest, physical and spiritual. I just want to, sometimes we do a lot of work that when Sabbath comes, you just, you just pray it would have been there throughout. But God says that those who do not keep the Sabbath, those who do not work cannot keep the work. Do you know that? Six days you shall labor. From, the, from your, you shall rest from your work the seventh day. So if you are an idle person, you cannot keep the Sabbath. So sick people need to be taught how to keep the Sabbath. This rest is very important. Exercise. And I told us when you are exercising, don't exercise before drinking water. Some people exercise extensively while the body is dehydrated. 
what will the the toxins do? They will destroy the cells. So exercise is very important in the morning hours and perhaps in the evening. Another thing is exercising in the forest. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you Ugandans, you are blessed. You have a lot of forests and trees. Exercising where trees are. Those who are having mental problems, if you want your mind to be clear, go and walk in the forest. You will be refreshed. Or go and sit where there is a, a waterfall. This is a therapy we've been using for those who are having mental problems, epilepsy, schizophrenia. They need to go to a, a natural environment where they see the, the water flows and as it drops and you see air in that area is negatively, highly negatively charged. It means it can trap a lot of oxygen. Exercise. So when we say exercise, where do you exercise? As one of the laws of health. Okay, so we have proper diet. What do you eat? Are you yourself taking proper diet? And we realize what my, uh, my brother Sammy told us in the morning, the best way to practice proper diet is to be good gardeners. You must farm. You must love farming. You must grow the food. If you have, if you want to be, a, a, if you want to live healthily and to make people live healthily, you must grow your food. And then we have the use of water. The use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true medicines. Every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies and how to apply them. My burden also will be how to apply them. If you are going to outside to meet in some cases, you cannot even look at. If not only the grace of God, you will just park and go back home. Serious cases. And another thing, it is essential both to understand, to do what? Understand how these remedies work. Do you understand? Or if you are told, yeah, I'm going to use water, I'm called so-and-so, I come from this place, I want to, to help you. I'm going to use water. And you are asked, why are you using this water in hydrotherapy? There is a friend who was a medical missionary, very excited medical missionary. The person who was teaching health and a doctor was translating. <laughs> How do you feel when a doctor is translating for you? You never went to any medical school. Some of us will begin shaking. Don't know what you're going to say. Now, this person was saying that hydrotherapy is very important. This is what it does. If you have malaria, you should do hydrotherapy. Exact, uh, uh, the, the specific hydrotherapy treatment should be hot foot bath. How many know hot foot bath? How many do not know by show of hands? Good. We'll have a nice practical here very soon. Because those are the basics. I'm, I'm only going to teach this in practical. These things we are reading here. I don't want to introduce the greater things that we may not manage. Are we together? Yeah, because these simple things are what God really bless the man, the most. Now, the person was saying that, you know, when you have malaria and you dip your legs in the water, the water, the heat will go up to the part, up to the part where the malaria parasite is and kill the parasite. <laughs> the, the heat will do what? Go and kill the person. Do you know what happened? The doctor went and sat down, stopped her very fast, uh, and told that people, you see, 
These people are coerced. They don't understand how malaria para parasites operate and how this water is going to help them. Now, let me ask you, you have used hot water. If someone is using hot football, what is the hot football doing to the body? Mm -hmm. Now, don't, don't, be, don't be fear. Just who will answer for those who? <laughs> yeah. you, you don't hear, you, you have not heard me well. What, what principle does hot food bath treatment uh, uh, follow or do to our body? What, how does it work? What mechanism? Have you heard it well? Yeah. You want to try? Yeah, I'll give you time, my brothers. <laughs> what is hot water food, hot food bath doing to your body? Is it, is that it's traveling and going to where the disease is eaten? What mechanics? Okay, you really tried. Uh, and this right, it improves the circulation of blood. And it creates what is known as artificial fever. See, if someone is having malaria, the temperature increases, and that is a healing process. You should not suppress that fever. You should not go for, uh, for the antibiotics uh, that are going to suppress the fever in your body. It needs to be boosted up even more. Are we together? So when you increase the, the body temperature above that which the fever is, it is trying to give the body uh, or to, to, to make the body operate in that optimal temperature that it wanted. And you, you know, when, when someone is sick and this fever, it is because a lot of cells are dying. So that circulation, there is perfect health equals perfect what? Circulation. Where there is pure blood, where there is blood, Blood carries with it what? Food. What else does the, does the blood carry? Minerals, vitamins, all those things, and even removes what? Waste. So you want to improve the circulation of blood, and even the white blood cells are boosted. The white blood cells. They are effect. In fact, they uh, most of the white viruses are concentrated on the on the sole of the of the feet of your foot. So it increases even five times, three times 
the action, the way the white buses are going to move and do their operations and destroy the virus or the bacteria or the fungus. So the use of water has to be learned. So this I'm promising us that we are going to learn very serious treatment of this. It should be skillfully be applied. All of us who knows it, who knows this treatment, very good. But my burden will be on skillful work. Yes. We want to add knowledge to, to this stuff so that you may know how to do things properly. And when we understand this, just water alone, the use of water alone, if all of us here understand it, I can send you to the field and begin the work. Do you know someone called Kellogg? Dr. Kellogg? There, there are two things that Kellogg was known for. Do you know them? Yes? Aerotherapy is one of it. Until he wrote a 900 page document on hydrotherapy. Water alone. There is someone who was called Jethro Close. <laughs> Have you heard of Jethro Close? Yep. Yeah. The guy was just walk, walking. He was just walking with his uh, his medical kit and walking in homes and asking, is there someone here who I can help? Is there someone? You just hear someone walking uh, on the road there. Is there someone here in this home that I can help? Then he meets a mother with a child who has been, paral uh, who has been paralyzed. And the mother says, this child has been here for many days. I'm just waiting for him to die. The doctors, it has rebuffed the doctors. The man took the child and went and do water treatment alone for three days and brought back the child alive. He resurrected his wife who, who died. You can say who died. <laughs> who was about to die. He resurrected by water alone. So we need not to take water for granted. You know, there are many techniques which I'll delve this into details. How the water, the vibration, the water molecules and how it affects the body. Water alone and the techniques you need to apply to help the people of God. During the National Sunday Law, these simple remedies are what is going to help us. Water is everywhere, right? And also sunshine is everywhere. Pure air is everywhere. These are what we are going to use. You will no longer call someone in Kenya to send you essential oil. <laughs> or any complex remedies that we have outside there. We'll be walking by faith using what God has given. What did Christ use for the blind? He used the soil. What healed, and what healed Naman? The simple remedy, soil, clay, by the way. That was clay. You'll see, you will hear, and you will see how we, how we can use the soil. This one we are stepping on in the clay soil to help people. So it ends by saying that it is essential both to understand the principles involved in the treatment of the sick and to have a practical training that will enable one rightly to use this money. So we should not labor much in theory because we need to understand the principles uh, that are involved when we are doing these remedies. We don't want to be termed as poor. Mm -mm. You must be pious, studious, and intelligent when you are applying these remedies. Even when a doctor asks you a question and the way you answer, hey, this thing is true. It can work. Are you ready for that one? Yes. By God's grace. How many desire? the teaching, anointing from heaven to help them in this Amen. by show of hands. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Father, what in heaven?
We thank you for introducing us into the healing heart, that which you approve. These are simple remedies that are at our presence always. But you, do, you require us to understand and skillfully know how to use them. We pray that as we shall be continuing with these classes, we may receive your blessing and you may qualify us to do this work properly. Let your blessings be upon us is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.